too dark. Oh, okay. Hi everyone. <laughs> that was so okay. Well, um, we're here today for the announcements like usual on Fridays, and today we're actually doing a special interview with Dr. Jolly. So we'll get to that in just a minute. I do want to just go over a couple of things with you first. Next meeting, next this coming Thursday is going to be conversation night, so bring your Japanese, or if you don't know any Japanese, still come because we have an activity for you. You want to be there. It's going to be a lot of fun. Come and just learn and use the stuff you use in class, but don't have much opportunity to use outside of class. Next, we have a Discovery Center outing that we're going on as just a club outing. Um, the club's not really paying for any of it, but it's just going to be a fun time to hang out with your fellow club members and get to know people and learn about science. So it's uh, going to be a fun time. I hope you guys will come. That event is on Facebook, and that's going to be on November 11th at 12 p.m., so make sure to check that out. And also, our group study session, we're trying to get that set up. If you are not already a member of the club member group, then that is where we are setting that up at, so you need to ask for an invitation or just ask to join it. Find a way to it. We'll add you by email somehow. Just contact us and we'll get you in there. So, let's move on now to the interview portion. <laughs> this is Dr. Jolly. And hey, I'm everybody. Yeah. I've probably met most of you, so it's nice to see you again. Uh, Dr. Jolly is the Modern and Classical Languages department head, and he's also my advisor, actually. He's pretty awesome. So, oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about the Japanese major and the, ja and the language proficiency certification program. Mm -hmm. So, for the Japanese major, how recently has it become an option for students? It's been an option, I'd say, for the past couple years. What we did was we used to have majors in Spanish, French, and German, and we kind of got rid of those and created a new major called the Bachelor of Science in Modern Language. And the way that works is that students complete 11 courses beyond the 102 level, and so that really opened it up for us to include other languages like Chinese and Japanese. And so you were among the first students to come to us. There's been a couple others that asked about Japanese, and I thought, why not? If we can put together 33 hours in coursework, you know, MSU classes, Foreign Language Institute classes, um, as well as transfer hours from abroad, and some other Japanese studies kinds of, kinds of courses, it became doable. So it's only been in the past couple of years that it's been an option. Um, I didn't think to ask this question to you prior, but is the program flexible or are the classes that are included in the spectrum of classes you can take relatively available to students every semester? I'd say it's it's super flexible. I mean, all of our modern language programs are flexible in that after 102 you complete 11 courses and those are all electives. So typically students will take 201, 202, then a conversation course, a composition course, and after that it really can be anything and in any order as well. We're super flexible in accepting credits from study away. We have partners in Japan, you can talk to the study way office, but also that we accept courses like, and I have my, uh, I have my cheat sheet here, right? We accept courses like Anthropology 334, Art 274, Survey of Asian Art, classes in Geography, um, Geology and Planning, History, Political Science, Religious Studies, and so those courses aren't offered super frequently, but they're offered enough that you can kind of pick and choose and complete the, the major that way. And uh, from my experience, I was able to find at least some class to take to fulfill my major requirements every semester. So you just kind of, you, you got to fight your way into them sometimes, but mm -hmm. they're there. Um, are the, well, are, are those requirements different from global studies and anthropology? And how, how does this program differ from those? Um, I'm not as familiar with anthropology. With glo From global studies, yes. And um, in that global studies only requires 18 hours in a, sing in, a, in a language, and you can include 101 and 102. So you're not going to go as far with the language if you do global studies. Um, and then global studies also has 15 hours in regional studies. I'm looking on the degree requirements because I don't have it memorized. Um, so in addition to the 18 hours in one modern language, regional studies, and then there's also a focus area. So it's pretty different the way they're set up. Um, but there is some similarity in the sense that a lot of the courses for global studies 
whether they be in the regional studies or the focus areas. Not a lot, but some of them could also count toward the Japanese major. So it's a great if you ever wanted to double major. Um, BS in modern language, Japanese concentration, and global studies would be a good way to go, or the Asian, study, Asian studies minor. I forgot we had an Asian studies minor. <laughs> Well, Isn't it uh, great that we're talking? Yeah, it's right. awesome. I'm yeah. learning things. I mean, I graduate in December, so it's it's not helpful anymore. But <laughs> earlier. Now it's helpful for you. Exactly. What is the goal for students to come away with with the Japanese major? We don't really tell students what they should do with the major. I mean, we want students to follow their passion, to do what they're excited about. I think that unless you're going to be a doctor, a dentist, a lawyer, a, a very specialized field, most undergraduate majors are great just to get your foot in the door to go into almost any area, right? A lot of companies are just looking for people with good communication skills, people who have shown that they can make it through four to five years of college. And so, and also, um, Language skills are a very important 21st century skill. So that's something that will set you apart as a major, say, from someone in another area who hasn't studied a language or studied abroad. And so really it's wide open. And it is a good pre-professional degree. You could go to law school, right? You could, you could go on to um, graduate school. So I try not to tell people what it's for, but it could open multiple doors. All the doors open. Yeah. Um, so... Now you know a little bit about the Japanese major, you can consider it alongside if you're still like thinking about what you're going to be majoring in. Um, it's a Bachelor's of Science, right? So yeah. it's um, some of those Bachelor of Arts things you might not, that you might think you're going to have to worry about, you might not have to with the Bachelor of Science. Um, so now we're going to talk about the, ja or, I keep wanting to say Japanese language proficiency. The language certification program. Yeah. Why don't you kind of run that down for us? So the language certification program is a new program that we have here in modern and classical languages. And it's a, it's what's called a competency-based program. In other words, we are going to measure your language proficiency regardless of whether you ever took a course in the department. So this um, certification is available in any language that's not your native language, right? So if you're a student from Mexico, you can't get it in Spanish. Or if you're from China, you can't get it in Chinese. Um, so we'll evaluate each student on a case-by-case -case basis to see if they really do have that advanced proficiency, whether or not, again, whether or not they've taken any courses. So say we have a student that um, lived for three years in Japan, an American student, and then they come back and they feel pretty proficient in Japanese. They don't necessarily have time or even the desire to take classes in the department. They can take, the way it works is you take a couple of exams, One's an oral proficiency interview. The other one is a writing proficiency test. They're standard exams, standardized exams. And depending on your scores on those exams, you can get um, the benefits of the certification program, which include a notation on your transcript, which is really cool. So it would say like, for example, um, um, Jane Doe, who graduated, right, with a um, bachelor's degree in business, language proficiency in Japanese certified by modern and classical languages as advanced plus or mastery. We have different levels and it's all on our website. Awesome. Do you have to pay anything extra to get that certification? The only thing you, that students have to pay for who are interested in this are the fees for the exams themselves, which total about $200. But if you think about it, it's worth it, right? Because that's cheaper than one credit hour of tuition at Missouri State University. Awesome. Well, uh, you guys haven't asked any questions. Do you have any questions now since there's two of you watching? Is anyone even watching? There's two people watching. Hey, hi two people watching. <laughs> well, the cool thing about Facebook Live videos is that they're available later on. That's true. And uh, people can submit questions to the Japanese Club page. And if you guys do have any questions, you can email mcl at missouristate.edu or you can comment on this video. We will get the question to Dr. Jolly and he will send you back some questions. Oh, well, hello. Um, so we're going to go ahead and end it there. And thank you guys so much for watching today. And do you have any last comments? How do I say thank you in Japanese? It's... Arigato gozaimasu. Arigato gozaimasu? Yeah. All right. Arigato go gozaimasu. Was Arigato. that close? Hi. <laughs>
。<笑>はい。バイバイ。